plants, like MTC and stuff like that? Do, do not, not at this time. <coughs> so what classes would you want to be taking in high school to prepare yourself for pharmacy? Um, I would recommend any AP classes you can take because those are free credits. And if you're going to be going to school for eight years, you want as many free credits as you can get. Other than that, um, as many chemistry and math classes. So you have that foundational start of, and know that you have an interest in that. Um, once, once you reach your fourth year in pharmacy school, you will probably use like half of 1% of all that chemistry you learn. But it's the base that you know the, how things work, how they interact with the body, and what types of things that um, can cause interactions and effects with medications. So, I'm going to quiz these guys. How many different medications are in the Wausau Hospital Pharmacy? Does that include different dosages? Sure. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses from the, from the group out here? So, there's over 3,000. So 3,000 different medications that the pharmacists are trained on how to use and know when to use them. And when you go into pharmacy school, it's something that you need to want to continue to learn. I've been, I've officially been out 30 years, holy cow. But if you think about it, when the Food and Drug Administration each year is approving new drugs to come on the market, and if each year they approve about 50 new drugs, over the span of my career so far, that's 1,500 new drugs that I didn't learn about in school. So you have to be somebody who wants to be a lifelong learner. Some of the mo most interesting ones are the genetic-based ones that are coming out now. Um, either of you able to explain CAR-T therapy? <laughs> so for a certain type of cancer, they take the cells from the patient, send it off and manipulate it, and then bring it back to the patient and it <coughs> kills their cancer cells. So that's a very expensive and very specific way of using genetic therapy. Um, cystic fibrosis, I think to me is another interesting one because that is a genetic um, passed along disease. And they now can identify the specific genes that each cystic fibrosis patient has. And so far there are three medications out there that affect some of the genes. They've identified about 40 different genes that affect cystic fibrosis and have created medications for three. So it's still a very dangerous disease, but they're working on it. So did you two have an idea that this is what you wanted to go to? Or did you say, I'm going to school and get my whatever? Yeah, what did you plan to be? <laughs> so I'm the youngest of six. Um, uh, one girl, my boys, all my brothers are pharmacists. That seems like pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so being the youngest, I was kind of introduced to pharmacy at a young age. Um, I didn't know what they were talking about during family events, gatherings. So. Um, to kind of figure out what's going on, I started working in a retail pharmacy as soon as I turned 18. And from then on, I just kind of um, decided I wanted to do pharmacy. Um, the thing that I enjoy most about retail pharmacy is the, um, the developing of like relationships with patients. And a lot of times people will say, you know, you just 
you know them by their medications, you know uh, what they're taking and stuff, but um, you'd be surprised what people tell you at a pharmacy um, already, and I've only been in the pharmacy for um, eight, six, six years now, and um, it is, uh, it's definitely mind-boggling to hear what people will say in a public setting at a pharmacy. Um, but it also kind of goes to show how much um, respect and how much patients trust you, and um, that's something that I've grown to really um, have a passion for and what I enjoy most about um, becoming a pharmacist. And you say you're from a smaller region? I am from a smaller, I'm actually from Amherst. Um, not quite the same story. I do have an older brother who is a pharmacist, but I don't think he influenced me that much. Um, but I had no idea what I was going to do going into college. Um, it was freshman year, towards the end of the year, and I had taken my first gen chem course, general chemistry and calc, and I loved it. Um, and then I've always been a team sports person. I love working with others. Generally, in high school, was in an athletic um, situation. But when I thought about those two things, I like sports, I like teams, and I like math and science. To me, that meant healthcare. Um, and I didn't want to be a physician. I think that role was too long, too hard. I don't want to do procedures. So I thought maybe I should just start researching what pharmacy is all about. And then I found a little bit more about clinical pharmacy, working in teams, and in interdisciplinary teams, meaning professionals with different skill sets working together to provide patient care. And I thought that sounds like a great job. You know, logistically, it's a good job. There are jobs out there, it pays well, there's security. So I just kind of went for it. So I also had no idea what I wanted to do when I started college. I um, went to the University of Eau Claire for my first two years. And when I got there, I was from a small town and the undecided room was <coughs> way too big. But the pre-pharmacy room, that was small enough for me and I'm like, I'm going to that room. I had always liked chemistry, but I didn't really know what I would do with it. I mean, you take chemistry and you're like, what am I going to do with this? How would I ever use this again in my life? So from there, unlike these badgers, I am a gopher and went to the University of Minnesota, which, by the way, is number two ranked pharmacy school in the nation. <laughs> Behind number one in college. <laughs> <laughs> Behind Wisconsin. I think like seven or something. It's like a five or seven. Yeah, something like that. But one of the things that interested me in pharmacy, as, as you saw in the video, there's a lot of different areas you can work. My first job was also in retail. And as a healthcare provider in retail pharmacy, like your Walgreens, your CBS, your uh, Young's Pharmacy, anybody can walk up to the counter and ask you a question. You don't have to call for an appointment, you don't have to go through the triage nurse, you can get instant either validation or recommendation as to, ooh, that's kind of bad, yeah, you should see your doctor, or no, that's okay, it's just seasonal allergies, here is our selection, these will work for you. So, pharmacists are the most accessible health care professional that there is in um, the health care system. So, once, once you're done with your residency program or school, what do you want to be doing in the world of pharmacy? I want to continue on the path that I'm on right now, which is clinical pharmacy working within a hospital. I prefer working in medium-sized hospitals, so like maybe 300 to 400 beds. Um, as far as like a specialization, I don't know what I find particularly like my niche, niche right now. Like I like infectious disease. I think the study of bacteria and treating infections is really interesting. I think um, cardiology is really interesting as well as nutrition. So, that's the nice part about working in a big health system. There's a lot of areas that you could maneuver into if you're inside of a, um, a hospital or something like that. So I'd like to just stay somewhere in Wisconsin uh, in a hospital. Uh, I wish I knew what I was going to be doing after graduation. <laughs> um, I guess, so while I'm on my rotation, fourth year rotations right now, um, so Monday through Friday I'm with Jill at Spires Hospital. 
Um, on the weekends, I'm still working at my retail job. Um, but post-graduation, I am looking to, I will be applying for residencies, um, and then I'm also going to kind of explore. Um, the last year of your rotation at the pharmacy school, you're working at various locations. Um, <coughs> from Madison, you pick a, they break the state up into six hubs, um, and then it's like a draft, you, you prioritize which hub you want to go to, and four out of the eight rotations from the whole year, you're assigned to that hub. Um, so this last year rotations, I really tried to pick a diverse um, locations to work at. Uh, so ambulatory care settings, working at an insurance company that pharmacists do. Um, I'll be at, I'm in mean, the hospital session right now, um, and then also uh, at a specialty pharmacy. So I'm um, really just trying to figure out right now what exactly I want to be doing. Um, and um, that's what the next <laughs> month and a half I really need to <laughs> figure out what I'm going to be doing going forward. Tell them what a specialty pharmacy is, because we're all here. <laughs> so, specialty pharmacy, so with a lot of disease states, there's high cost medications, you watch the news, I'm sure you've heard about all the price of medications, how expensive things are. So what specialty pharmacy is, it is a type of pharmacy that primarily focuses in handling expensive medications for um, select disease states. Um, and with specialty pharmacy, in comparison to say a Walgreens or a pick and save that you have here in Wausau, they have to go through certain accreditation processes to um, be able to handle uh, these types of medications. So it's a little bit uh, different um, style of retail pharmacies, the way that I will um, kind of think about it. They're just handling more um, expensive medications. So at Wasa Hospital, as an example, we have right around 30 pharmacists and 30 pharmacy technicians. The pharmacy technicians is a position that is a high school grad who um, then either receives on-the-job training or attends a six-month tech school program to become a certified technician. And they're the ones that actually handle all the medications. They restock the nursing areas, they prepare the injectable medications, they triage the phone calls, and we get lots of phone calls, and um, are doing that type of work with the pharmacist. The pharmacist are looking at the medications the physician has ordered, making sure it's the best choice, the right dose, and then also managing some of the medications. For example, if you're a diabetic and need insulin, a lot of the physicians will order pharmacy to dose the insulin when they're in the hospital. Especially surgeons, they're like, we do the surgery, you take care of the medications. So that's what the pharmacists are doing there. We have pharmacists in a number of different areas. We have a pharmacist who works in the neonatal intensive care unit, which are these little babies that are under three pounds. I mean, they're tiny. So you can see where being accurate and precise in their medications would be needed for those little babies. We have pharmacists out in the cancer center, which we need to bring a video of our robot. That's what we need to do. We now have a robot that may prepare some of the chemotherapy so it's safer for the staff. And we also have a pharmacist there who patients make appointments with. Uh, chemotherapy traditionally has been given by injection. So you come into the clinic every day, you sit there for four hours while this infuses into your body. But now it's advanced to where there are oral chemotherapy medications that are just as potent, but you don't need to come in to see somebody every day. So they come in to see the pharmacist, make sure to get it all set up with the specialty pharmacy so they have the medication in their hand, and then checks on the side effects and is it working, are they tolerating it. And most importantly, are they taking it? Um, one of the things that I'm still pretty naive about is about 30% of prescriptions that physicians write never get filled. 
for whatever reason, the patient went in, the physician said, this is what you need, and then either they couldn't afford it, or worried about the side effects, wasn't really the reason they went in in the first place, but they're never filled. So one of the biggest um, jobs of the pharmacist is to identify what the patient's actually taking, can they afford it, um, are they taking it as prescribed, and do they continue to refill and stay on it. Are the doctors pretty open to coming to you guys and getting your opinions, or are they like, I don't know, I'm going on the doctor here. <laughs> well, you have the whole spectrum always, but uh, many of the schools of pharmacy and schools of medicine are now combining classes and rotations, so you're, they're used to working in the team environment like Mike talked about. So talk about like going on rounds or something. So in a typical day of a clinical pharmacist inside of a hospital, one thing that's commonly done is rounding. And rounding is when you get together with your interprofessional team, uh, which usually includes pharmacists, physicians, physician assistants, nursing staff, dietitians, uh, social workers, just a really big group or small, of people with just different backgrounds and skill sets. And prior to getting together, it's good to quick look through your patient list, whatever floor you're on. So if I'm on cardiology, I'm going to look, look at the patients who are on that floor and just kind of get a, an idea of what's going on with each patient and look at their medication list and a bunch of other um, details. But once I've triaged my patients and I've looked through them, we get together as a team to talk about each individual patient, their situation, what's going on, and what's the plan. So um, I can, <coughs> the environment can be a sit-down round where we go into a, like a conference room, sit down, and just talk about each patient. Usually each patient is presented by a nurse or the attending physician or a physician in training, which is also a resident. Um, we'll present the patient and then people will bring up various things that need to be addressed. So I would probably focus on like a medication issue that I saw while I was triaging the patient. Um, and we'll just go through the list to make sure we know what's going on, our patients are safe, we know what the plan is for future treatment and discharge. Um, and that kind of keeps everybody in the loop and that's why we do it. That's why we're a team. We all need to know kind of what's going on with the patient. So that's rounding. So one thing retail pharmacists can do that's pretty common these days is to give immunizations. So it's flu shot season <coughs> starting about now and have you done any flu clinics? I haven't done any flu clinics. Um, I've been doing actually more shit drinks as it is, so the shit is vaccine. Um, but like you said, flu season's about to start so it's uh, going to be picking up very quickly. <laughs> Michael? I've never given a vaccine. I'm trained, but I've never done it. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. We'll have to get him some practice. Yeah. <laughs> so at Wausau Hospital, every all the staff are expected to have immunizations because, one, we don't want to get sick when the patients come in with something, and two, we don't want to get the patients sick with a different condition than they came in with. So we're expected to be fully immunized, and um, flu clinics yesterday where they would go through thousands of flu shots to give to the staff. One important consideration if you're thinking about going into healthcare is healthcare is a 24-7 career. So with even retail pharmacies being open 24 hours now, if you are looking for a Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 job, pharmacy is probably not the best fit for you. Um, we at Wausau Hospital, the hospital pharmacy is open 24 hours a day. Our emergency room physician has a shift that starts at 11 a.m. until 9.30 p.m. because that's when the most patients are seen in the emergency department. So be thinking about, ooh, is this going to really fit my life because we hate to have you go through eight years of school and then say, wait, I have to work weekends and holidays? Yes, you do. And we do that because we patients need care anytime 
and we're there for the patients. Does you guys make a lot of your own medication, or is, is, do you purchase them? It all depends upon what you're doing with it. For the most part, it's all purchased. There's some that they can't swallow a tablet, so we need to make it into a liquid that can be used. Or a cream dermatologist come up with all sorts of crazy combinations and mixing those together are generally not commercially <coughs> available. But um, actually by regulation, if it is commercially produced, we're required to buy it. So we can't, you know, sit in the basement and make up stuff just because it'd be cheaper. We'll buy the commercially inspected products. One thing I also wanted to touch on is the cost of medications. I probably get an email once a week at least. What are we doing about the cost of medications? Uh, I have a little bit of control over that, but not a whole lot. There are some medications that one vial or one injection is $16,000. So the, my example is one for multiple sclerosis. So it's important to the patient to receive the medication to maintain their mobility and able to live independently and work. But who can afford $16,000 for a dose of medication? So um, as you've heard throughout the year, I would think, um, Healthcare costs are a concern, and making sure everyone has access to care. So how can we do that with $16,000 medications? 100,000, and there is a new genetic one out. Um, it actually replaces a gene that is missing, and it's a one-time injection, $2 million. But without it, the babies die. So it's who makes these decisions? How do we decide what, who gets what medications and who can afford them? So one area pharmacists work with is with the insurance companies to look at the research information. Was it effective? Is it doing what they said it would do? And then what other alternatives are there to it? So pharmacists are involved in insurance companies and coming up with the list of medications that insurances will cover. So questions from the group. I'm sure you get extra points if you ask questions. <laughs> Are you finding that the older the older generation gets, that your job is going to be more secure? Or are they going to be opening the field up even more for, for more pharmacies? That's a tough one. Um, if you look at it from one perspective, I, all the shop goes closed. So every shop had a pharmacy department in it. It grew up as a system based around 